This picture is from my second Wizard World Comic Con. I attended the previous year and saw Matt Smith. I didn't get to meet him, but I went to his panel, which was amazing. It was my first ever Comic Con and experience seeing a celebrity. But that's not what I remember most about it. What I experienced that day I will always remember. It is the reason I keep coming back year after year. It was the community, the sense of belonging. Everywhere you look at Comic-Con, people are filled with enthusiastic and unashamed passion and excitement for all things geek. I had never experienced a more welcoming environment. And of course, it's awesome to have the opportunity to meet your favorite actors. That brings me back to this particular con in 2016, the one where I got the chance to meet David Tennant and Billy Piper. Probably one of the greatest days of my life. This just happened. I can't even breathe right now, guys. I'm, just, I'm so excited. That was such a short moment in my life, but it was probably the best moment of my life. This is my brother. Today is his first ever Comic-Con. I decided to make this video to help him and any of you who are attending your first Comic-Con know what to expect. Step number one, choose an outfit. You probably already own plenty of options. You can wear a fandom shirt, hat, or get more elaborate and cosplay. This year we will be attending Wizard World Comic Con in St. Louis. This is my fourth Wizard World Comic Con in St. Louis. You have arrived. Step two, go through security, grab your wristband, and prepare to be overwhelmed. Just take a moment to take in everything going on around you. You will feel overstimulated at first, but just give it a second and you'll fall right into the excitement. There's so much to do and see at Comic-Con. Also, be prepared to stand in a lot of queues. You will be queuing for panels, photo ops, autographs, food, basically everything. But that's okay, because step number three, make friends. Talk to fellow Comic-Con attendees. Everyone is incredibly friendly, and you'll find you have a ton in common, so conversation should come really easy. I've managed to make friends at every con I've attended by just talking to the people next to me in the queue. I've even been lucky enough to see friends again. We met each other at last year's Comic Con, and look who I ran into again! Yes! We making bonded friends. over Stranger Things and Harry Potter. Yes, making friends at Comic Con. <laughs> How you do it? That's great. We are standing right across from where John Barrowman is taking selfies and doing autographs. John Step number four. Attend panels. While you do have to wait in the queue, most panels, if not all, are included in your ticket purchase. They're one of my favorite aspects of a con. You get to see your favorite actors answer questions and share stories. You can even ask your own question. We want the world to know we won't let hatred grow. My name's John. I don't know the song! I can pull up the lyrics on my phone. I'm sure you can, millennial. <laughs> So Poppy's come to the United States, and the first thing she told me was that she went through a period where she was confused about her sexuality. How is that for you in China? And she said, I can't do, can't talk about who I am in China. I have to only be myself here. We have such freedom and rights here for people that we still have to fight them too because some of them are being taken away. We have to keep fighting for them because someone like Poppy cannot be herself in her own country. And Captain Jack comes back to life. Like, ah! We've got two battling um, very uh, strong accents that I love um, and are amazing here. And then we've just got our very boring sh flat accents. <laughs> when the helicopters were coming in, he, he was getting them all into land as if he's like the helicopter guy. <laughs> he's, he's honestly dressed as Sam. He's like, hey, can you see there's a mountain? Can you see the mountain? It's that tone of voice that, you know, a kid knows that they have to be quiet for a second. <laughs> Not Billy and Dom and Elijah. <laughs> you can hear it. I'm like, guys, shut up. 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 Can we agree uh, wholeheartedly now that Sean Acid is Samwise Gamgee? I mean, come on. Sebastian Stan! Do I know my Russian still? Yeah, like, like any Russian? Что такое? Говорю по-русски. Which of your characters would survive the upside down and why? None of them. What is your favorite part of existing? Like honestly, learning. When I got out of school, all I all I realized I I really wanted was was to go back to that 
when I had an opportunity to learn something. There's a really great blooper reel with Anthony Mackie on Infinity War. I mean, Mackie, if we were in a real fight, you and I would be the first ones dead. <laughs> Sorry, Sebastian, but I have to cut in. While a major highlight of attending a con is seeing and meeting celebrities, don't forget to spend time on the main floor. Step number five, check out all the awesome cosplayers. These are people who put an enormous amount of time and effort into their costumes and love to show them off at Comic-Con. Feel free to compliment their costume or ask them for a picture. Almost all of them will have no problem letting you take a picture with them. But of course, ask first. my own advice and experience attending Comic Cons, I wanted to give you newbies an introduction to some of the incredibly talented and friendly people you might meet at your first Comic Con. This brings me to step number six, interact with the artists and vendors. I've asked a variety of creators to share their work, first Comic Con experiences, and favorite things about attending these events. 7980, it was in Chicago. It was a comic book convention, so very different from what it is today. DC, Marvel, I'm a big comic book guy, so the pop culture is fun, but I enjoy comic books the most. I'm not a huge comic book guy, I know, but I love like the movies and uh, the games like that. Little baby Groots that I make, sculpted and molded, and these are cast resin, so they're basically uh, plastic copies of the original sculpture I did. I think he's a cool character. Uh, he has no lines, yet he's so lovable. This is all stuff that I'm into, so it's fun to talk about this stuff with people. And I like to do cool, colorful things, pop culture, I'm a graphic designer, so there's graphic elements to it. And you can usually spot people who it's like their first time. It's just like overload, they have this glaze over their eyes, like what's going on? Because you know, it is a lot to take in. Being really nervous, you know, about doing my art in front of thousands and thousands of people, not knowing if people were going to take to it and be interested in purchasing it or anything like that, so that was a big leap of faith. I hand carve on artificial pumpkins. Everything is hand done by me. It's not a CNC machine or a laser or a Star Trek computer. That would make my job a lot easier, but no, it's, it's one of a kind and I take about four to five hours to do each one. I love hearing stories about, oh, well, I want to order a Buffy because that's how uh, I met my wife. We met through a Buffy connection and stuff like that. Two of my favorite celebrities that I've actually become friends with over the last seven or eight years is Ming Na from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She has a pumpkin and she invited me down to watch her film, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., because she had wanted to meet me, which was very humbling. And Jerry Ryan from Star Trek Voyager. It's fun seeing celebrities just like walking around and you're like, oh yeah, I know you, you know, I know. like what show you're from and stuff. I'm the creator and writer of this new graphic novel. This is my debut graphic novel called Seasons. It's a uh, slice of life action drama with a lot of like superhero and supernatural elements. I love the costumes. That's like a highlight. You know, I've seen some really amazing costumes. You get to do whatever you want to do, you know, in a costume, you know, just have fun and, and be yourself. I like seeing what people are making because like a lot of it it comes off really unique and it's really cool to see so many creative people all in one place. People enjoy patches. We made them all ourselves, all made local in Missouri. There's approximately 700 different designs here mixed in. They're just fun and we make a lot of people happy. The last 15 years we've probably sold three to 5,000 wands. All of our wands have a chamber in the handle which allows people to choose their own core elements to put in the wand. Somebody pointed out that a, a wand without a core was just a stick. <laughs> Originally, we used just the first, the three core elements that Ollivander used, which is Phoenix Feather, 
unicorn hair and dragon heart string. But then my basic Americanism came out and I decided we needed more choices and so my wife and I came up with 12 different core elements. Watching the people's the smiles on their face when they just say, are you a Harry Potter fan? They say yes. I say pick up a wand and they realize they can pick their own core element and they go, <gasps> so we've made lots of young witches and wizards happy. I love Harry Potter and I love Lord of the Rings. I draw what I like, so there's not many times that I'm drawing something that isn't already something in my heart. DC Comics was my entry into comic books. So I was in the DC before I really discovered Marvel. So I tend to draw them more. My daughter and I, we both are artists. It's just kind of in our blood. I am a 17-year-old self-taught artist. My fandoms range from scary to silly to overall just strange. And cosplayers is what surprised me because I didn't didn't know people dressed up as their favorite characters. And it was pretty cool. They're all so friendly. Like you can go up to cosplayers and be like, can I please take your picture? Even if in the they're in the scariest looking outfit ever, they'll be so sweet. Who's your and the same with all of the vendors. They're all super nice. These conventions, the great thing about it is that you can be whatever you want to be and nobody judges here. You know? Everybody's very welcoming here, you know, and you have artwork of every type of genre and every type of of pop culture, you know, and, and it's great because you get to see other people's artwork. You get them like, man, that's pretty good. I want to get, you know, get to that level. You know, got to work harder, and it does push me to work harder when I do these. What inspires me? Uh, stuff that I liked when I was a kid. You know, I mean, that's why I have a lot of nostalgic stuff like Bucky O'Hare and uh, Dragon Ball and stuff like that because it's stuff that I like. Um, I kind of realize that if I draw what I like, it shows in the artwork and people tend to gravitate to it more. I do a lot of pop culture kind of parodies. Like, you know, it's not, some of it's fan art, but like I, I, I kind of, I always kind of go towards doing something that's going to make people laugh. Us as artists, we want to make sure that you are having fun and that you are doing I, I, just like, this is what I love, uh, this is what I do, uh, and I never want to stop. So I made these all by hands. These are all done by me. Uh, and the neat thing is, they're not photographed, and I do every single star, every, every nebula cloud, and it gets even cooler. So, hidden every single one of these is a very, very tiny spaceship. Really, really tiny. And uh, they all have different themes, so we got Star Wars, Star Trek, Guardians of the Galaxy, anything big space-wise. Seeing people actually appreciate the artwork and go, like, oh, this is so cool, how, how much, how much? And it's not really about the money, it's just the fact like they like it so much that they are willing to actually buy it or pay for it and take it home with them. But it's seeing that smile and the excitement in their eyes. That's that's what wakes me up every day. It's fun meeting a lot of people. I'm kind of an introvert, so it forces me to talk and get to see a wide variety of people. So it's really fun to just see a wide age difference and then also just a, a wide difference in terms of, of people's backgrounds. It's fun to hear stories about why people have these fandoms that they have. I mean, everybody has a fandom, but hearing about how they got into it is really, really fascinating for me. So I like coming to these to like see all the cool costumes and meet the cool people. The costumes, like obviously that's the best part, just seeing people come out as their favorite characters and just interact with people, seeing people be a character, and just, it was pretty much that, it's the people. The, people for sure. the community, like the surroundings, you know, of it. it's, a, it's a really good platform to, to talk to people and get to know people that you would never have you know, met before. I've been into what's now dubbed as pop culture or geek culture my whole life. I've been into anime, I've been into manga, I've been into sci-fi since I was like 10 years old I was reading sci-fi novels so this is all really like home to me and my family is kind of like all grown into that same thing. To them this is just natural. Holy crap this is amazing. When's the next one? Now that you have an idea of what to expect when you attend your first ever Comic Con, I have one last step for you to follow. Step number seven. Take lots of pictures. Enjoy your first Comic Con and welcome to the community.